Welcome to Civic History, and today we'll be discussing the assassination of one of America's lesser-known presidential assassinations, William McKinley. So who was President McKinley? President McKinley was, before he was president, he was the governor of Ohio for four years, so two terms at the time. Yes, back then, the governor's terms were two terms. Maybe I should make a video on why governors became four-year terms. He served as chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, was known as an ardent protectionist. He also was the last president to be a veteran of the Civil War when he served as a brevet major in the Ohio Cavalry Division. His close friend, the political operative and later senator slash chairman of the Republican Party, Mark Hanna, convinced him to run for president in the 1896 election, where he faced down a personal hero of mine and ended up defeating him, William Jennings Bryan. So the McKinley administration. Uh, his first vice president was Garrett Hobart, who served as president of the New Jersey Senate, speaker of the New Jersey State Assembly, and chairman of the Republican Party of New Jersey. Uh, his big issues was he was known as a neutral currency. At first, he was actually pro-coinage of silver and then retracted coinage of silver. Um, he wanted to increase the tariffs. He got a Supreme Court justice pushed through. Joseph McKenna was an interesting person because many actually felt that Attorney General and later Justice McKenna wasn't qualified to be a Supreme Court justice. So to rectify this, he took law classes at the, at the University of Columbia. He was a very pro-laissez-faire president, as opposed to the early progressivism of a hypothetical President Bryan. Uh, originally being for bimetallism, he then moved against the coinage of silver. He was actually one of the first social progressive presidents. He believed that, you know, he made a big point that all people in this country should be able to share in the prosperity without fear of discrimination, racism, hate. Now, we can get into what that all means in a different video. Civil service reform. Uh, he also began the tradition of American imperialism, annexing Hawaii, which was the Hawaiian Republic at a time, the Spanish-American War, intervening in the Boxer Rebellion. He was re-elected in 1896, bringing along with him Teddy Roosevelt, who was serving as governor of New York and the great war hero of the Spanish-American War liberating Cuba slash returning them to the United States. He defeated Brian in a rematch. Sadly, Brian lost again. Yep. But anyways, his assassination. A couple months after being re-elected president, he attended the Pan American Expo in Buffalo, New York. This was like a world's fair, but for uh, just the American continents. He was going to be shaking hands at was known as the Temple of Music, and this is where our story really begins. The assassin. Leo Chogosz was a Polish-American assassin, was a Polish-American worker who grew up in Detroit, Michigan, was actually born there. Uh, he was a fan of anarchism after seeing how laboring, you know, radicalized him, as many were radicalized in the late 18th century. He attended speeches of Emma Goldman, the female anarchist uh, writer and speech giver in the United States, and often remarked at how the socialist movement in the United States was quite disappointing. The other funny thing was that during this, when he attended anarchist meetings, he was often thought as like a faker or a fed, many would say, because he didn't. they said he didn't really believe it, but I guess is his way of proving that he really deep down believed in anarchists, he developed a plan to assassinate the president. So here we go. The shooting. It's said that McKinley was, as it was, he was greeting, shaking hands at the Temple of Music. He greeted, shook hands with a young, with many people. There was a gentleman who came in. The police at the time were very nervous by this gentleman because he seemed agitated and irate, but he walked past. A little girl came up to President McKinley and asked to shake his hand and then asked for his lucky, he wore a corsage flower. And she asked for it, which he knelt down and gave it to her. And people, many people said those flowers he wore were his lucky charm because the next person woke up was Leo Chogosh, who woke up, who walked up to him with a handkerchief concealing his hand as if it had been injured. 
McKinley, being the good politician he was, instantly went, reached out with his left hand to shake the other gentleman's left hand when a revolver that was headed in that thing, a 32 caliber Ivor Johnson safety automatic, was fired into him at 4.07 p.m. Chogosh was quickly tackled, and that's where things went actually not too bad for the president. It looked like he was going to recover, another false recovery. There was a surgeon in Buffalo who was actually called in, was performing a surgery, and said, listen, I can't break away from the surgery even for the President of the United States, to which they responded, there is the President of the United States. Uh, the bullet was found to be lodged in his chest, around his back, once again. Modern doctors claim that had McKinley just been a little less fat, he probably could have survived it, or if we just had, you know, modern medicine, he could have survived. But, unfortunately, he died. He apparently seemed to be making recovery, then a fever took hold once again a week later. And he was a model patient, though. Fever took hold, lost consciousness, and then passed away in the night, becoming the third president to have been assassinated. Teddy Roosevelt, who was hiking in the Adirondack Mountains in New York State, was quickly summoned to Buffalo and was read the oath of office and did it in a friend's parlor in Buffalo, New York. Now let's get to the trial of Leon Chogosh. Uh, it was quite obvious that he did it. His uh, attorneys attempted to get him to plead to accept a plea of insanity, but the problem was you had to to be charged as in saying New York. You had to prove that you didn't understand your actions, which Chogosh would never not admit to doing. His last words are even, I killed the president, as you can see there. Uh, they made a big thing about his brain, finding it to be not any different than anyone else's. He was electrocuted. He was killed by electrocution in one of New York State's prisons. But anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, in the next